Welcome to the Association for the Study of African American Life and History's 2023 Black History Month Festival Virtual Plus Experience. Today's program features the presentation of the 2023 Asala Book Prize Award. The leadership team of Asala would like to acknowledge our members, supporters, and our sponsors, without whom these and all of our programs would not be possible. And please be sure to go to our website for a complete list of programs that will be available all month long right here on Asala TV. We will begin today's program with the singing of the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, as performed by the 105 Voices of History under the direction of Roland M. Carter. Yeah, I'm so feeling straight from 
And now, Dr. Jarvis Givens and Dr. LaShawn Harris. Hello, everyone. My name is Jarvis Givens, and I teach at Harvard University. I'm an executive council member for ASALA and a, the co-chair for the Book Prize Committee um, for this year, alongside my colleague, Professor Harris. Um, the ASALA Book Prize annually recognizes an outstanding book in the field of Black history and culture. The ASALA Book Prize Committee is interested in projects that model rigorous approaches to the field, books that have clear implications for how we teach and represent various aspects of Black history, books that have the capacity to introduce important aspects of African American, of the African American experience to broad audiences, and books that use sharp analyses of African American history to speak boldly to the contemporary moment. And for more information about the Asala Book, Book Prize, excuse me, please go to asala.org. The Book Prize Committee, which includes Drs. Gerald Horn, Eula Taylor, Chris Tinson, Elizabeth Todd, Breland, and Kelly Carter Jackson, received over 50 books, and this year selected seven outstanding finalists. They include Evan Ashwood, Mississippi Zion, The Struggle for Liberation in Ottawa County, 1865 to 1915, published by University Press of, no of Mississippi, Tulani Davis, The Emancipation Circuit, Black Activism, Forging a Culture of Freedom, published by Duke University Press, Christina Green, Free Joan Little, The Politics of Race, Sexual Violence and Imprisonment, published by the University of North Carolina Press, Irvin Hunt, Dreaming the Present, Time, Aesthetics, and the Black in the Black Cooperative Movement, published by the University of North Carolina Press. Treva Lindsay, America Got Damn, Violence, Black Women and the Struggle for Justice, published by the University of California Press. Quito Swan, Pacifica Black, Oceana, Anti-Colonialism in the African World, published by New York, North, excuse me, published by New York University Press. And Dennis Tyler, Disabilities of the Color Line, Redressing Anti-Blackness from Slavery to Freedom, published by New York University Press. Congratulations to the 2023 Asala Book Prize finalists. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations to all um, uh, the finalists for this year. Um, and now we are pleased to announce that the 2023 Asala Book Prize winner is Dr. Keto Swan, Associate Professor at Indiana University and author of Pacifica Black, Oceana, Anti-Colonialism and the African World, published by New York University Press. Congratulations, Dr. Swan. Um, and now we have the opportunity to turn it over to one of our esteemed jurors for this year for remarks about this excellent work. Um, and so we'll turn it over to Professor Gerald Horn, who will tell us a little bit about this year's winner. This is Gerald Horn on behalf of the Book Prize Committee. As ever, the submissions for the Asala Book Prize were generally excellent, making it difficult for the judges to settle on a victor. This factor alone is quite heartening, imparting confidence in the future of the field. Nevertheless, at the end of the day, Keto Swan's Pacifica Black, Oceana, the Black Pacifica, and the African World, published by New York University Press, was chosen as the winner of this prestigious honor. In 2020, Swan published Palu's Diaspora, which is a profound narrative of the 20th century African diaspora based on the political lives of Bermudian Pan-Africanist and ecological engineer, Paulo Kamar Cafego. Swan shows how Kamara Cafego grew from a student activist in South Carolina to a globe-trotting Pan-Africanist and Black power organizer whose work spanned and emerged the Black Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Ocean worlds. Remarkably, Swan also engages his multiple rural projects and manuals on sustainability, the construction of homes and water tanks from bamboo, renewable energy, climate change, and appropriate technology. This magnificent feat including the book we are honoring today, required research across Britain, Australia, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, Fiji, 
Bermuda, Kenya, and the United States. The book made a massive intervention on the field of Black internationalism by exploring the relationships between environmental justice, technology, and Pan-Africanism well beyond and through the contours of the Black Atlantic to engage the Black Pacific. His latest book, Pacifica Black, impressively explores Black internationalism and anti-colonial movements in the South Seas. Swan raises several questions about Blackness, Black consciousness, and the Black radical tradition in that part of our small planet. His book reminds us that the scope of the Black diaspora extends far beyond the Atlantic world. One of its criti critical interventions is its framing of the Black Pacific as a critical framework for exploring the, di uh, the diaspora. Across several chapters, the book spans movements across Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Fiji, and New Zealand. This is a marvelous accomplishment. This would be a challenge for a scholar trained in Pacific studies. Swan's ability to have painstakingly navigated the nuances of Black and Indigenous struggles across several countries reflects his development into a leading scholar of the global African diaspora. Swan impressively interweaves Atlantic and Indian Ocean world narratives into his text. He shows how familiar Black movements like negritude, Black power, Black liberation theology, Black women's feminism, and Pan-Africanism intersected with South Sea movements such as the Nuclear Free and Independent Pacific and the Pacific Women's Conference. Pacifica Black makes a, makes a major intervention in the subfield of Black internationalism which has given relatively little attention to Melanesia in the era of decolonization. Pacifica Black also has geostrategic and geopolitical consequence insofar as Washington of late has turned its attention to this region in league with Australia and New Zealand. Swan also gives a boost as suggested earlier to Black power and negritude insofar as these movements pay close and careful attention to the Black Pacific when other trends, not least in South North America, were inter inattentive. As with any very good book, Swan's intervention opens the door to further explorations of this topic. His work deals heavily with the 20th century, but we know that in the 19th century, Black American sailors and whalers were traversing the South Seas, oftentimes settling down there. Similarly, there's been considerable scholarship on Black missionaries that has concentrated heavily on Africa and the Caribbean. What are Black missionaries in the South Seas? In my own book, The White Pacific, U.S. Imperialism and Black Slavery in the South Seas after the Civil War, I underlined, I underlined and underscored how Black birding, a subject delineated two by Professor Swan, that is to say the forced labor of Melanesians, accelerated after the U.S. Civil War with oftentimes former U.S. slave traders at the point. Therein, I raised the tantalizing possibility that this crime may have reached the U.S. West Coast, suggesting that there are those who consider themselves to be African American who may also be Melanesian American. This possibility too merits research. World War II studies are quite comprehensive, but a detailed and specific study on Black American soldiers in Papua New Guinea, a topic sketched by Professor Swan, is long overdue. Professor Swan, in his worthy book, discusses the experience of the late feminist anthropologist Angela Gilliam, a former neighbor of mine in Harlem detailing her work in Papua New Guinea. Her encounter there decades ago is overdue for exploration. These discrete subjects are the logical next frontier to explore. And when this is done, like scholarship generally, 
that author will owe an immense debt of gratitude to Quito Swan in his profoundly important book, Pacifica Black. Thank you very much. Asala family, how you doing? Quito J. Swan, really excited to be here to accept the 2023 Asala Book Prize Award for my latest book, that makes number three, Pacifica Black, Oceania, Anti-Colonialism in the African World, published by NYU Press in 2022. The book is about the Black Pacific and Black internationalism in Oceania. Uh, and I think it's really relative for where we find ourselves today. I want to thank my colleagues, the community, the Book Prize Award Committee, my family, NYU Press, uh, all the activists and, and um, indigenous uh, culture workers who lend me the time, the energy, hosted me in their homes as I crossed Oceania, several countries, Australia, Papua New Guinea, Fiji and Wanawatu, um, just to name a few. You know, accepting an award like this in this particular crucial time is not so much just an honor, but it's really a responsibility. Um, it's a reminder of why our work matters, uh, why our lives matter. And so while we celebrate, while I'm aesthetic, I'm also trying to remind myself we need to be focused on the bigger work at hand, uh, which is the liberation and self-determination of Black people across the world. I'm excited by Asala's upcoming theme on resistance, so I look forward to meeting those who I haven't met, uh, spending time with those. It's been some time that we broke bread uh, in Florida um, in the fall. So take care. Once again, congrats also uh, to my co-finalists. There were a number of great books uh, written by a number of fantastic scholars, and it's such an honor to be counted amongst uh, such great work. Thank you for your time. Respect. And now, the Fayetteville State University Choir, under the direction of in Dr. The Denise Lord, Payton. In the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. In the Lord, in the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. In the Lord, in the Lord, my soul's been anchored in the Lord.
Thank you for joining us for our presentation of the 2023 Asala Book Prize Award. And don't miss the Black History Month marquee event on Wednesday, February 22, 2023, featuring the Secretary for the Smithsonian, Lonnie Bunch III. Access packages are $150 for gold access, $125 for silver access, and $65 for general access. Registration is required. Please go to our website at asalh.org for more information. And on Thursday, February the 23rd, Asala presents Resistance and the Black Press. This event will start at 7 o'clock Eastern on Asala TV. And on Saturday, February 25th, 2023, Asala co-sponsors the Chisholm Effect, an in-person play at the Arc Theater. Tickets are available for $150 for orchestra seating and reception and $75 for general admission. Purchase your tickets today at asalh.org or by calling 202-238-5912. And on Monday, February 27th, Asala presents the final installment of the Virtual Author Book Talks beginning at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Asala TV. And on Tuesday, February the 28th, Asala will conclude the month-long festival with our closing program starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Asala TV. We would also like to thank our sponsors who have made this festival possible with their generous support and financial contributions. First, we would like to thank our legacy sponsors, and our History Maker Sponsors, our Preservation Sponsors, and our Media Sponsors. Without your help and support, this event would not be possible. If you would like more information on how to be a sponsor or a member of Asala, please go to our website at www.asalh.org to learn more about how you can become a part of History in the Making with Asala. Or you can contact our offices at 202-238-5912. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell for our YouTube channel, Asala TV so you can be alerted to all of our programming when we go live. You can also follow us on our social media platforms via Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for the latest information pertaining to all of our virtual events for 2023. We look forward to seeing you at our next event right here on Asala TV.